Unit 8, Video Lecture 3, Mass to Mole Reactions. How many grams of N2O can be made from 23.25 moles of NH4 and O3? Here, we're going to use the parts of our mole map where we're starting on our moles of our known substance. And we can go, we have to go to our moles of our unknown substance. We're going to do this by using our mole ratio. And then we can go from our moles of our unknown substance to our mass of our unknown substance by using our molar mass. So we take our 23.25 moles of NH4NO3. And from our balanced equation, we see that there's one mole of NH4NO3. And we want to go, eventually, to mass of our N2O. So we're going to need our moles of N2O first. So we see that there's one mole of N2O. So moles of NH4NO3 cancel out. And we're on, we're on spot of where we want to go. So now, our last step is our molar mass of N2O. So one mole of N2O, because that is always what molar mass is. Molar mass is always compared to one mole. And here we see that our mass of nitrogen and our mass of oxygen. So we have 2 times 14.01 plus 16. So our molar mass of N2O is 44.01 grams of N2O. So moles of N2O cancel out. We're left with grams, which is the mass of what we wanted. So we take 23.25 times 1 divided by 1 times 44.01, and we get 1023 point two three two five well in our given we have four significant figures so we want four significant figures in our answer so we look at one two three four we're rounding to the ones place so the three looks to the right and the two tells the three to stay a three so our final answer is one thousand twenty three grams of n2o what is the mass of water that is produced from 1.5 moles of glucose? So we're given the balanced equation for photosynthesis here. Or sorry, first, we're given the balanced equation for cellular respiration here. And we're given 1.5 moles of C6H12O6. And we want the mass of water. So we'll start with moles of C6H12O6 and we'll go to moles of H2O. We do this by using our mole ratio. We can then go from moles of water to mass of water by using molar mass. So 1.5 moles of C6H12O6. From our balanced equation, we see that there's one mole of C6H12O6, and there is six moles of water. Moles of C6H12O6 cancel out, so we are left with moles of H2O. Now we need to use our molar mass. Remember, molar mass is always to one mole. So we'll put one mole on the bottom to get it to cancel out. And the molar mass of water is 18.02 grams of water. So moles of water cancel out. So 1.5 times 6 divided by 1 times 18.02 divided by 1 is 162.18 grams. Well, 1.5 has two significant figures. 
our second significant figure here is the 6. So we're going to round 162 to the tens place. We look to the right, and the 2 tells the 6 to stay the 6. So 162 rounds to 160 grams of water. Powdered aluminum reacts with iron 3 oxide to produce aluminum oxide and molten iron. How many moles of aluminum oxide is produced? So we want how many moles of aluminum oxide. And remember, aluminum oxide, aluminum is Al plus 3, oxide is negative 2. So we crisscross, drop our signs, and reduce. So we have Al2O3 is produced when 2.3 grams of aluminum is what we're given. So in order to do this, we need our balanced equation first. We know that aluminum reacts with iron 3 oxide. This is going to produce our aluminum oxide and our molten iron. So to balance the equation, we have, we have aluminum, we have iron, and we have oxygen. We have one aluminum, two irons, three oxygens, two aluminums, three oxygens, and one iron. So we'll put a two in front of aluminum. That's balanced. We'll put a two in front of iron. That's balanced, and our oxygen's balanced. So our map is, we're starting this time on with mass of aluminum, and we'll convert to moles of aluminum, and then from moles of aluminum to moles of Al2O3. So 2.3 grams of aluminum. The molar mass of aluminum is 26.98. So 26.98 grams of aluminum in one mole of aluminum. Because remember, molar mass is always to one mole. And our last step from moles of aluminum to moles of aluminum oxide, we need to use our mole ratio that we get from our balanced equation. So here we see that there's two moles of aluminum and one mole of aluminum oxide. Grams of aluminum on the top, grams of aluminum on the bottom. Moles of aluminum on the top, moles of aluminum on the top, moles of aluminum on the bottom. So our calculator strokes here are 2.3 times 1 divided by 26.98 times 1 divided by 2. And we get 0 0.042624, etc. Well, in our given, 2.3 has two significant figures. Our second significant figure is the 2. Remember, these are leading zeros and are never significant. So we're going to round to the thousandths place. The 2 looks to the right, and the 6 tells the 2 to become a 3. So our answer is 0 0.043 moles of Al2O3. Pause the video lecture here and determine the mass of sodium hydroxide produced. If you need to see how this was worked out, stay tuned. Otherwise, you can start working on your homework. Don't forget to turn in your video lecture reflection. We're given 0.25 moles of sodium, and we want the mass of sodium hydroxide. So we're starting with moles of Na, and we're going to go to moles of NaOH. We do this by using our mole ratio. We can then go from moles of Na2H to mass of NaOH by using molar mass. 
So we take 0 0.25 moles of Na And in our balanced equation, we see that there are two moles of Na and two moles of NaOH. So I put moles of Na on the bottom because I want it to cancel out. And then I need my molar mass of NaOH. and I have 40.00 grams of NaOH over one mole of NaOH. Because remember, molar mass is always to one mole. So here I take 0.25 times 2 divided by 2 times 40, and I get 10. When I check, 0 0.25 has two significant figures. Well, right now, there's no decimal point. So my trailing zero is not significant. So all I need to do is put a decimal point. Now my trailing zero is significant. And my units, grams, and my substance, NaOH.